Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Immersive Engineering for Minecraft 1.10. So while there is a lot in Immersive Engineering, and this is just the beginning levels, uh, we're going to be going over the getting started area. We're not necessarily going to be starting off with a chemical thrower, but we'll get there eventually. There are actually uh, ways that this is uh, split up into multiple areas. One is uh, kind of like before you get into the nether. Uh, another is uh, pretty much before or after you have uh, creosote. And uh, well, let's let's get into that, shall we? Uh, there are some small changes between 1.10 and the other versions of immersive engineering. Uh, it's also a little bit glitchy right now because they're still, uh, you know, upgrading it to the newer version. So keep in mind that not everything's going to work the same exact way, and uh, you'll want to uh, keep watch on things that you do just in case. But anyway, uh, let's get into this. Uh, we have different ores. Uh, if you look here. Uh, you're also going to want to make yourself some of these basic tools to start with. So when you start mining, you're going to come up with some of these items, like copper, bauxite, which also makes aluminum, or in this case, aluminium. So if you try and spell aluminum in your uh, NEI interface or JEI interface, it'll be aluminium, not, al uh, not aluminum, like uh, most Americans pronounce it. Uh, then we also have lead, we've got silver, we've got nickel, and we've got uranium each of which make their respective ingots, except, of course, for aluminium, which is uh, bauxite ore. Now, each of those uh, may be replaced by other uh, ores, depending on the mod pack that you may be playing. But if you're just playing with immersive engineering and there's nothing that's going to override these ores, they should look as you see here. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is craft yourself an engineer's manual, engineer's hammer, and engineer's wire cutters. Now the wire cutters aren't necessarily as important as the hammer is. This is your go-to tool for everything. Now I'm going to leave those here for now because I already have them on my toolbar. But the recipes for these is uh, the engineer's manual is just a book with a lever. Very simple. The engineer's hammer is a couple of iron ingots, string, and a couple of sticks or treated sticks, which we'll get into later. But uh, primarily just some sticks will probably cut it for you and save you some effort as well. And of course, the engineer's wire cutters, which is just a couple of sticks and an iron ingot. So once you get uh, some iron mined up, you should be all right to uh, harvest the rest of uh, this stuff, and you can really start getting into the rest of the mod. Now, there are other things you'll find in the wild as well. Uh, by breaking grass, you may find, over time, some uh, where is it, uh, hemp seeds. I don't know if I have any in here. Yes, I do. Industrial hemp seeds, which uh, will grow these plants here. And uh, let's uh, break one of those and actually start a new one here, so just so you can see what they look like. Here we go. There you go. Brand new. It's very bright and green little sprouts. Uh, over time, they will grow similar to sugarcane, where they will have multiple levels. Which, of course, using vanilla tactics, you can harvest in simple ways. And you will get, uh, typically, uh, a couple different... Uh, uh, harvests here. One being more seeds so that you can plant more, as well as industrial hemp fiber, as you see here. Now, what you can use this for is a lot of different things. One is tough fabric, which can be used in multiple applications. But uh, tough fabric, oops, the recipe is uh, just a bunch of industrial hemp fiber around a stick. Very simple. Uh, and then, of course, you can use it to make different things like uh, hempcrete or uh, jump cushions. Uh, hempcrete uh, is basically clay with some uh, industrial hemp fiber. And uh, I'll, uh, I've got an area where these are placed down so you can see them, but they're just an aesthetic uh, walking stone or uh, another kind of stone you can use that really works with the aesthetic of this mod. Uh, also, we have jump cushions, which the recipe is a whole bunch of tough fabric. Together, we'll make, uh, what was that, three? Three jump cushions. And if you put these down, if you're falling from a high height, let me get way up here, and then I'll change my game mode. Here we go. And, ugh, no damage whatsoever. Well, that's because that's what the jump cushion's all about. So if you need uh, an escape route or something, area where you just want to jump off of a large height, this is a solid way of landing rather than always having to splash in water. So that's just kind of a, a little convenience item. Now let's get into the more practical things, shall we? So the thing that's really holding you back from getting into a lot of this mod is two things. One is going to be access to a coke oven, and the other is going to be access to a blast furnace. So 
you'll f you'll start off with a coke oven which is usually coke bricks you'll need 27 of those plus an engineer's hammer to start now coke bricks recipe for that is a whole lot of clay lots of clay so you're going to need bricks which is of course cooked clay more clay and in the center some kind of uh, sandstone uh, which is usually just four pieces of some color sand uh, in a uh, crafting grid should do the trick and you'll need 27 of those uh, because well I think that makes you two so you'll end up with at least 28 if you make a full recipe of these uh, it's not gonna hurt to have an extra extra block you know it, it, it's weird how it works that way but it's just a three by three cube is all you're making uh, there's no hollow spots on this it's very basic straightforward and that's what I'm making here right now so I've got these little steps on the side just to make it easier on myself there we go and you can see there you go coke oven doesn't look like it though does it well, that's because you have to right click it with your engineer's hammer there you go and now it is usable so you open the uh, interface here then you have an input and an output and then you also have alternate items over here now in the old version of immersive engineering not really old because it's a relatively newer mod but you would put glass bottles or buckets or things of that nature up here and then they would output down below well it's not really going to work in that fashion here so with this one let me grab some of the different things you can use in this case uh, we're going to use buckets you can't use glass bottles anymore kind of took that away so you have to put buckets in here but there are ways of uh, you know making this work for you now you can put in wood which will get you charcoal and that's great you'll also get a little bit of creosote which is what we need creosote is the, the the flow of life in this mod you have to have creosote you have to have steel so the more creosote and steel you have the better off you're going to be the more stuff you can advance with uh, you can also put coke in there or excuse me coal and that will get you coal coke now I would recommend that you don't put either of those in there unless you're having difficulty in obtaining them uh, I would recommend you use blocks of coal because those are going to be the most efficient uh, of these it's going to burn for the same amount of time as it would for uh, nine pieces of coal but it will get you more creosote for your buck it will also get you uh, you know a block of creosote uh, of um, coal coke excuse me now if you can't have those and you really need something you can at least put in some oak wood but you're not going to get any coal coke you're just going to get regular charcoal uh, as your result and then uh, as this fills up over time you uh, your buckets will fill up and you know come down into the uh, outlet now if you put a hopper on this thing underneath on the bottom here you your uh, stuff will go out into the chest and you'll get your uh, items there now if you want you can actually put uh, you know more uh, stuff up here you can put your buckets which you'll see they go in and you can also put more of your uh, ingredients like the uh, block of coal they automatically sort to the proper areas that they need to be in so it's rather convenient in that aspect later on you'll need to make a crude blast furnace to access things that are steel in this case I'm going through this uh, beginning setup without access to steel. You're probably also wondering, what is a coal coke going to do for me? Now, you see here, one block of coal coke, I got myself a whole lot of creosote oil. The coal coke has a lot more burn time than coal. Let me get some regular coal here, and I'll spawn some of that in. 16,000. This is 32,000. So you can see that coal coke burns twice as long as regular coal. So it's a valuable material that you can use for you in your furnace or other needs. So what are the things you can make before you make a crude blast furnace? Which, by the way, a crude blast furnace requires blast bricks, and the recipe requires blaze powder, nether bricks, which means that you'll have to have most likely gone to the uh, nether. Uh, now there may be some other mods installed or uh, other accesses that you have that would allow you to skip that step and just you know make straight forward but uh, essentially i'm skipping that because we'll get to that next this is the tier one stuff that we're going to be getting into so you can make yourself an engineer's workbench which is made very simply let me uh, grab one of these there we go recipe for that is just some treated wood planks and treated wood fence on top of a crafting table you're probably wondering oh treated wood how do I make treated wood well that's where you get your creosote from in here over time 
as this thing is smelting the uh, the different items in here, you will get a bucket of creosote from your results. Now with that, you'll need some wood. Most any wood should do for you, and therefore you just put your creosote oil bucket there, your wood planks, and you get yourself, just one of them will do, you get yourself eight treated wood planks for one bucket of uh, creosote. So therefore, you can then use that there we go, grab that, to make more and more treated wood, which can be decorative, can be very useful as well. So, in this case, an engineer's workbench, which, like I said, treated wood planks on top of treated wood fence and a crafting table. Now this can be used for multiple different tools and blueprints that we'll get into in another video. For now, we're just going to cover the basics. So, we've got your treated wood planks, slabs, and stairs. There's no difference on these except for the fact that they just look a little different. Now, I should say that there is more to this, though. You now have treated wood, but before that, you don't even need to do that. You can actually, uh, you know, access some other metals as well. Now, each of these metals, when smashed with a hammer, will get you different types of grit when you uh, smelt them and turn them into an ingot and you uh, then use the hammer on some of them iron, steel, copper, lead, and aluminum will get you the uh, respective plate. Now there are also some combinations of these. Uh, if you get silver and gold together in a crafting grid it will make two electrum grit which then you can uh, smelt up into an ingot and hammer it. Uh, also, if you take nickel and copper together in a crafting grid, you'll get to constantan grit, which then, once smelted, you can also hammer that with your engineer's hammer. And to do that, here, allow me to grab a piece here, and I have some iron in my inventory already. You just put your engineer's hammer and whatever it is there, and you'll see you get an iron plate. Now, if I were to switch that out with a piece of iron ore, you'll get iron grit. That's how all those work. And over time, your engineer's hammer will take a little bit of a hit, but there is other ways of processing this. This is just your entry-level method. Now that you have access to treated wood, and your different metals, you can really start getting into some decorative stuff as well as some useful things. Now, we have here... <laughs> A gunpowder barrel. This, in all intensive purposes, is similar to TNT. So the recipe is a wooden barrel around a bunch of gunpowder. I should say that the uh, recipe for a wooden barrel is just a bunch of treated wood planks with some treated wood slabs on top. And it's treated differently from TNT though. Um, and it also will uh, act a bit different. It's used more for mining. And you know what? We'll get into that in just a moment. Let me continue on down here. I'll demonstrate that. I'll keep it on my hotbar so that I don't forget. But uh, in the meantime, let me get a little bit more creosote for the next bit. Okay, so here we have wooden barrels. Now, wooden barrel, as I showed you before, recipe is very simple and straightforward. It is good for storing regular liquids like water, uh, you know, and anything that's not hot or gaseous. Uh, now, a metal barrel will store everything as well as make it adjustable. For instance, if I take my engineer's hammer, which is also a tool used for changing inputs, outputs, on, offs, inverting signals, uh, hammering metals and ores, it, it is your go-to tool. You're going to want to make sure you have at least one of these with you at all times. But if I right click on here, nothing happens. If I right click on here, you'll notice it's changed to orange for the, those that can see the color difference on there. Now if I click it again, it disappears entirely. What this is is input, output, and nothing. So you can uh, modify things with your metal barrels, which a metal barrel, the recipe is just a bunch of iron sheet metal and iron sheet metal blocks, which uh, that is just iron plates like so to make these. Or you can take some sheet metal slabs together to do that. It's very simple stuff, uh, which Here's what the different sheet metals look like. We've got aluminum, or excuse me, aluminium. We've got iron, we've got lead, constantan. Then we've got concrete, which uh, of course I should grab the main block here. Concrete is made with either sand, gravel, water bucket, and clay to get you eight. Or you can use slag, which is uh, an off, uh, an excess uh, item when uh, using other items that we'll get into in another video. Uh, you've also got your concrete tile stairs got your hempcrete, then you've got your leaded concrete, which uh, 
that there is made with lead plate and concrete. Um, and of course we had the, uh, wait, that's uh, hempcrete. The uh, concrete is very simple. I showed you that one. The chiseled version is uh, basically just four concrete makes four concrete tile. It's really simple stuff on how to make these. Uh, but then you get access to other items as well as you see here. And I'll go over those in just a moment. Okay, so as I was saying, the wooden and the metal barrels. Now that you know how to make the, each one of these, which as I was saying, it's just simple, you know, four uh, plates of each of the different metals will make you the different kinds of uh, sheet metal. So it's a really basic recipe. Uh, these are good for storing a lot of liquid. Now toss them in here, you can get 12 buckets worth. Same thing with the metal bucket. It's just that this one here is adjustable and will accept all fluids regardless of temperature, as well as some gases. Now they work a little bit differently as well. Uh, so I am in creative, so I'm kind of flying here. Now you'll see while I'm holding the bucket, it says empty on all of these. If I don't hold it, it won't say anything. If I have my hammer, it won't say anything. So you're going to want to have something to do with liquids in order to uh, read this information. Now you saw before, if I hold this over, it says creosote oil, 12,000 millibuckets. Now if I pour some in the top one, because right now we have an input and in the bottom as default, allow me to demonstrate an output. So if you just stack these, they will actually go from top to bottom. Gravity will affect it. So if I pour it in the top, you see it's draining and then it goes immediately to the bottom one. So therefore you can store a lot of liquids this way, you know, 12, 12, 12. So you've got yourself 36 buckets worth of some kind of liquid in these. Now, if you wanted to have it the opposite way, you could switch it around. Now I could do this and then uh, let's say I put one, I break that put one on top of this and it's like all right well how do I adjust the bottom of this well that's simple enough you just aim at it shift and right click instead of just right click and you will affect the opposite face of this item so to give an example let me stack some of these up I will stand on top of this and currently it is orange underneath which means output now if I shift right click it then changes the bottom to nothing, which is the next step. So I want to change it one more time and it is now an input. So let's do that with this one one more time and it should allow me to have it come up now. So if this is empty, oh, look at that. Creosote oil went up to the barrel above it. So it's got automatic inputs and outputs on it that you can adjust so that they go up or down. Pretty darn handy. Beyond that, we've got things like scaffolding, which scaffolding is pretty useful stuff. It, it's uh, recipe is just a bunch of treated wood with some sticks and you have multiple versions of that as well, uh, like your aluminum scaffolding, which is of course aluminum ingots with some aluminum rods, which rods are made with just two of the ingots together will get you four rods. Really simple recipes here. Then you've got your uh, fences, uh, which recipes are just some uh, planks and some sticks that are treated. You also have your wooden wall mounts and aluminum ones, which are, you know, wooden planks plus treated sticks. And here's the advantage of scaffolding. Just by walking forward, I automatically start climbing it. And therefore you can use it as a automatically climbable surface. It's really nice. It works with the aluminum and I can even climb kind of diagonally like that just up to the other one. Uh, there are different looks about these. You've got your different uh, textures on the top on some of them. Uh, the uh, treated wood scaffolding is just very basic stuff. And then of course the fence, you can stack it up to make a really nice pole. You've got your lanterns which the uh, recipe for that is a couple glass, couple iron, and some glowstone will get you three of them. And they are just as uh, lit up as a, um, a piece of glowstone. So therefore they are very nice to look at, very decorative. And if they're mounted on the side of something, they actually will have this little bracket pop out. Now, if you notice here, I have some of these in place. Now, what happened there? What this is, is this is, an, is a post which here, allow me to uh, show you the recipe for that first. For aluminum, it's just a couple of fence on top of stone blocks. Uh, for uh, the wooden one, it is a couple of treated wood on top of some stone bricks. And with this, if you use your hammer on it, 
on the outs outcropping here, just right click, you can create these little outcroppings. And with this, you can then mount other things on it. Now, of course, if I take my lantern and I want to mount something underneath it, you just mount it underneath it and it automatically adjusts. It's really simple. You can put more stuff on there, but you know, it's not exactly going to uh, work the way it should. Now, you can, in this version, uh, modify opposite sides. You can't modify uh, multiple sides, you know, like making four or five pieces sticking out all over the place. It's pretty much just opposite sides of each other. Now, let's get back to this gunpowder barrel, as I had commented earlier. Now, I've got a little area over here set up for some items that uh, I also wanted to cover, which are very valuable. These are your different kinds of crates. We've got a wooden storage crate, which in here I've just got a bunch of obsidian. And it's your standard inventory size, so that's pretty darn useful. You know, your regular um, chest size here. You know, if you look here, I've got a regular chest. Now, you're thinking, well, what is the difference with this versus that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's costs more to make as well, which is, you know, treated wood planks, which of course means you have to have creosote. So why would I even want to bother with this? I mean, they don't even merge together to make a double chest. Well, here's where it is. You notice I have an axe. If I chop this up, I pick it up, and I have two, well, I already had picked one up in the creative mode, but I have the, the box here. I put it back down. It has all the stuff in it still. So you can take this thing with you adventuring, place it down, fill it up, pick it back up again, and it's taking up one inventory slot. No more are you taking up a whole bunch. So it's a placeable uh, kind of backpack uh, of sorts. So it's very handy. Yes, it's next to TNT. I will show you the reason for that shortly. Uh, but it's really good like that. Now, the disadvantage is uh, that if it blows up, so do all the items inside unlike a chest, which has a chance of all the items inside getting blown up. Uh, probably not, though, depending if there's multiple explosions. Now, the reinforced storage crate, in this case, this one here, the recipe is just a bunch of iron rods, iron plates, and treated wood planks. So you could make this pretty much at about the same level. You just need a little bit more iron out of it. Now, it acts exactly the same way, but the difference is it is immune to... Uh, regular blasts in this case. So let's run a little demonstration. So you saw that I have a vanilla chest here, I've got the wooden crate, and I've got the uh, iron uh, reinforced crate over there. Set this off and we go boom. Now with that you'll notice all the items are gone. Uh, I might have, oh it looks like there might actually be a crate down there. I was surprised. Uh, it looks like the crate itself survived, but uh, the uh, contents were blown up in that case. This one here, the chest blew up, and we've got a bunch of uh, obsidian. Let's see how much we actually pick up. Oh, we got a whole stack back. Now this one here, crate is still perfectly intact. You can access it just as it was before. So I recommend you take one of these so that when you place things down and that sneaky creeper, creeper comes up behind you, you don't lose all your stuff. Now. I was also talking about this gunpowder barrel. You see what happened here. And you know when uh, something blows up, uh, you'll get some of the dirt blocks back, not all of them. Well, the gunpowder barrel is a little different. It acts just like TNT does as far as uh, you know, interacting with redstone signals and such. But uh, it performs a little differently. Now I'm going to light that up and you think, oh, it's going to make a big explosion. No, it doesn't. It just makes a little animation and boom all the blocks are harvested so this is a method of mining <laughs> in a way if you want to uh, blow up an area and you just want all the blocks back from it well you can use charges to create tunnels so there you go it created a lot of mess but it saved all the blocks now of course it's not going to uh, you know harvest trees as if uh, you know, you're not going to get the leaf blocks back and stuff. It's as if you had harvested it by hand. And another useful tool is going to be your engineer's toolbox. This is made with some aluminium plates, a little bit of rose red, and a wooden storage crate. So make sure that you can put those to use in another way. This is another way of using a storage crate that is a little bit more mobile than having to put it down on the ground. Now when I right click this, you get this little uh, opening area here, and you can put uh, typical tools and weapons up here. 
you've got an area for food, and then of course you've got an area for wiring and anything. So if you just shift click into here, it should go in. Be aware that at this at the point of this, if you shift click a full stack of something, it might uh, it might eliminate part of the stack. There's a bug uh, reported currently, but uh, currently you I mean you can carry a whole bunch of just uh, different wiring stuff supplies in here, and it will uh, allow you to put it in there or not. For instance, if I try putting a crafting table in here, it's not going to let me. So I have to you know do that. But you can therefore carry around a whole bunch of just random stuff. Plus, if you want more tools or food, you can just put it in the anything slot here. So it, it's kind of cool. It organizes your stuff for you. Uh, you can also put it in your shield slot and walk around with it, uh, you know, but uh, you're going to want to watch that because if you try, you know, right clicking in the air and, you know, you're trying to mine a block and you accidentally click the, oh, whoops, uh oh, and you, you've picked something up and then you're like, ah, oh, on it. So I don't recommend putting it in your offhand slot unless you absolutely have to, but it is a pretty handy thing to have for organizing a lot of your gear. All right, so I'm not going to cover all this stuff today, but there is one more thing I'm going to cover, and that's the Faraday outfit. This here, well, it looks pretty interesting, that's for sure. I will show it to you. It is actually a little easier to make than leather armor, because typically leather armor, you have to, well, you've got to uh, kill a lot of cows, because, you know, a, piece, a set of leather armor is like 24. Well, this, if you find a whole bunch of aluminium, and you don't want to spend all your iron because you're going to need your iron for stuff, but you want some protection, then you'll probably want to uh, make yourself one of these sets. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. If anything, uh, it'll help you out later on if you uh, mess around with a Tesla coil. But you can see it gives me the same armor protection as leather armor. Now, it's made very simply. Uh, the recipe is just using a bunch of uh, aluminum plates. That's it. Every single piece is made in the same way as your traditional armor set, just using aluminum plates, which is just an aluminum ingot smacked with a hammer. So you can make yourself this fancy looking suit of uh, armor. All right, so that's it for part one. Uh, part two, we're getting into a bit more of the machinery and other things you'll have access to still before you get into the steel level. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please give a like, subscribe, and spread the mischief to others you think they'll enjoy it as well. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.